friends this video on unit and measurement part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam please make sure that you have watched unit and measurement part 1 to part 8 before going ahead with part 9 the notation that is called the scientific notation so we started representing numbers in terms of scientific notation so that even if the units are changed, the number of significant figures remains the same. So what is scientific notation? In scientific notation, each number is represented in the form of a into 10 to the power b. Where b is the power which is just any integer and the coefficient that is a is called significant. So the terminology used for a is significant. We will take an example now. Let us consider this example. How can we write this number in scientific notation? We can write it as 5 into 10 to the power 3. So this 3 is an integer and this 5 is the significant. Now whatever we write as the power of 10 they will never be considered for significant figures. So the number of significant figures will be counted with this number that is with the significant. Let us take another example say 0 0.0000076. Now how do you write it in scientific notation? We write it 7.6123456. So 10 to the power minus 6. Now this will not be considered in counting this number of significant figures. So here the number of significant figures would be 1, 2. That is 2. So when we start writing all the numbers uniformly in scientific notation, there is no discrepancy which arises when we change the units. Now that we came to know what is scientific notation, let us take an example to see how it overcomes the ambiguity which we faced previously <coughs> with the significant figures. Suppose we have a length which is measured as 7.6 meters. So how many significant figures are there? Two. Now suppose we convert we want to convert it into centimeters. So that would become 7.6 into 10 to the power 2 centimeters. So again, this would have two significant figures. This when converted into kilometers would be 7.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 kilometers. So again, this would have, this would have 2. So that means while conversion of units, the only thing that will keep changing is this thing and not the significant. Therefore, from the significant, the number of significant digits will remain the same. There are a certain rules to be followed for arithmetic operations with significant figures. Rule number one, in multiplication or division, the final result should retain as many significant figures as are there in original number with the least significant figures. That means, let us suppose we are multiplying two, multiplying or dividing two or more numbers. Each of them have different number of significant figures. In that case, the result will have the number of significant figures as many as present in the one which has the least significant figures. For example, Let us say we multiply 5.879 with 4.65. How many significant figures are there? In this case, it has 4 significant figures. In this case, it has 3 significant figures. Now, when we get the result, it comes out to be something like this. So, how should we represent the figure? How many significant digits should be there? The number of significant, this is 4 and this is 3. So 3 is the least one. So the result should have 3 significant figures. 
So we have 27.3 as the answer. Similarly, rule number two, it states in addition or subtraction, the final result should retain as many decimal places as are there in the number with the least decimal places. It is exactly the same as in case of multiplication or division. That is, in this case, in this case, we talked about significant figures. In this case, we are talking about the decimal places. Here, let us suppose we are multiplying 6.2. We are adding, this zero is by error. So let us suppose we are adding 6.121 plus 7.4 plus 8.123. So how many decimal places are there in this case? Decimal places, 3. Here, the number of decimal places is 1. Here, the number of decimal places is 3. So how many decimal places the answer should have? It should have 1 decimal place. That is, the result should be 21.6. So in case of multiplication or division, the result should have as many significant figures as there are with the number which has least significant figures. And in case of addition or subtraction, we don't talk of significant figures. We talk of the number of decimal places. So during multiplication and division, we talk of significant figures. In case of addition and subtraction, we talk of the number of decimal places. I hope it is clear to you now. Now we will learn how to round off uncertain digits. I already told you whenever we say talk of any number, say 4.8923. In this case 4892, they are all considered to be reliable digits and the last one is considered to be the uncertain digits. Now, at many times, we want to round off the uncertain digits. So, what is the procedure for rounding off? There are two things which we do. One is rounding up and the other is rounding down. So, let us see rounding up. In case of rounding up, we increase the terminating digit by 1 and drop off the digits to the right if the digit is greater than 5. Let us suppose we have an example. 5.4757 in this case if we want it if we want to round off this number to three decimal places at present the number has four decimal places suppose i want to round it off to three decimal places what would it be when i want to round it off since 7 is greater than 5 the last digit so that means i want to remove one digit so we will see the digit which we want to remove. If that digit is greater than 5, in that case, we will increase this digit by 1 and remove this digit. That is, we can write it as 5.476. Now suppose if I want to round off the digit to two decimal places, in that case, I want to remove these two digits. Correct? So in that case, we will check for the second digit. Now say, I want to round this digit to one decimal place. Now this was the case for three decimal places. Now suppose I want to round it off to one decimal place. For one decimal place, we want to remove all the digits from here. So this 7 is again greater than 5. So what we will do? We will increase 4 by 1 and we will remove all the other digits. So we will write it as 5.5. .5. So that is rounding up. Now when we talk of rounding down, what we do is, similarly in this case, suppose that we have a digit 5.4752. Now I want to round this digit off to three decimal places. I want to round it off up to three decimal places. That means I want to remove this digit. This digit is less than five. 
So what I do is I just remove this digit and leave everything else as it is. So I write it as 45.475. Correct? So this is how we round up and round down. So first we need to check to how many digits we want to round it up or round it down. If the digit is greater than 5, we increase the previous digit by 1 and then remove that digit. If the digit is less than 5, then we leave the previous digit as it is, just remove that digit. What if the terminating digit is equal to 5? Well, in that case, we will again have two different scenarios. Let us suppose that we have some digit, say 2.354. Now we want to round it off to one decimal place. That means we want to remove these two digits. Now, here we see that this digit is equal to 5. It is neither greater than nor less than 5. So in this case what we look for is whether this digit is even or odd. If this digit is odd in this case we will increase this digit by 1. So we will write it as 2.4. In case that is this scenario, that is if the digit is odd, so we write it as 2.4. Now if the preceding digit is even, for example if we had it 2.254, in this case this is 5 and this is an even number. So in this case we could have written it as 2.2. So I think it is clear now. So rounding off will have two categories, rounding up and rounding down. We will round up when the terminating digit is greater than 5. We will round down when the terminating digit is less than 5. When the terminating digit is equal to 5 in that case, if the preceding digit is even, we will leave it as it is. If the preceding digit is odd, we will increase it by 1. Let us look at an example problem. The problem asks, calculate the surface area of a cube where each side measures 7.203 meters. Now, surface area of a cube is equal to 6 into side square. So here it would be 6 into 7.203 into 7.203. So this comes out to be 311.299254 meters square. Now we have to round it off. So to how many digits will we round it off? As we discussed in a rule that in case of multiplication the least number of significant digits, whatever number of decimal places we have in the side, we will try to round it off till that many digits. So we will round it off till 311.3 meters square. That is, after 2, we have 9, which is greater than 5. So we will increase 2 by 1 and we will remove all the digits from here. So it will be 311.3 meters square. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.